Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. I'm one of your host, Blessing, Addy O.A. Jr. Joining me is the bluey shirt wearer, Greg Miller. Hello, how are you? I love this shirt. Thank you very much, Roosevelt's everybody. Not a sponsor, but they did send me the shirt for free. And Ooh. another one, and a and a Street Fighter one. The president, wait, 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 wait. The yeah. Street Fighter shirt. It's an, it's an XL. I will so, find a way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, I'll bring it in for you for sure. I, you were the first person I thought of, yeah. but I was like... I know you're, it's, you're gonna look like you're my son. <laughs> you don't, don't like want to hit Ben. Run around. You don't want to hit like text Roosevelt and be like, "Hey, bro, hey, homie." We're starting small. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So like, I figured we'll do this. We'll give him a good. Let's see how good I look in it, and then we'll beg for more because they have a bunch of other cool ones. Now, who is Roosevelt? Roosevelt's. You oh, ever heard of is he sure people? You know, I've always read it as results. <laughs> Same. <laughs> now, That's everybody awesome. knows I am stupid. So I could be the one wrong. You are the young ones. Because he, here's the other thing, Bless, and you made this uh, joke, uh, I think, on the uh, kind of funny happy hour recently. Chiverches, mm. right? Chiverches, yeah. yeah. Read it as churches. Now, the chat didn't eat me alive, so I assume I'm correct, right? That is Roosevelt's? So I thought they were doing a thing where they're using the V as a U, you know? I think yours makes more sense. Because if you just say those all those concepts. The logo together, looks like Teddy Roosevelt. Okay, cool. That's yeah. Okay, like yeah. if you say all those it was Roosevelt's, right? Like yeah. if I that doesn't that doesn't look like results if you just say it out loud. No. Huh. You learned something today. Yeah, I learned I learned. We've all something. been there. Don't worry about it. That's really cool. But yeah, I like the shirt. They got like again, not a sponsor unless they want to be one day. Hey, what's up? And also send me more free shirts. Did but they send Brian Altano? They do. They okay. send Altano a lot. Because I saw Altano. Brian always looks great. And so I did ask him one point when I was getting collared shirt era going, where'd mm -hmm. you get him? He said Roosevelt's like, oh, I always Because I saw him wearing a Street Fighter shirt and yeah. I was like, that is raw. Like I need to figure out how to talk to these people. And I didn't realize you were talking to these people. So now like is there a way Now we have a contact. So again. <sighs> uh-huh. We will break out this video. <laughs> I guess we'll just send them the link. The top of the show is all about Roosevelt. Leave the part Look I, this. The I have another bluey one that I'm excited to wear. It's uh, all over print of all the different bluey characters. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow. Well, how you been? I'm good. You excited for the state of play? <laughs> I was, I'm I'm always excited. I was ex I wasn't expecting like the, to get deep into the Roosevelt stock as well. I was caught yeah, yeah. But yeah, now somebody's like, is it Rue or Ro? Roosevelt, Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, right? And I'm saying Roosevelt. We had a we have Roosevelt Road where I'm from, and I, I don't know. I'm saying Rue. I'm an idiot. No, there's two, there's two R's in Roosevelt, Roosevelt. I mean, it might be pronounced two R's or O's. Sorry, sorry, two O's. <laughs> there's two O's in Roosevelt. <laughs> okay, but it might be pronounced Roosevelt. I don't know. Again, this is like a Aaron Shawnee Seney thing. All right, mm -hmm. you spell it Shawnee, it's gonna be yeah. Shawnee. We're gonna pronounce we're gonna it that way. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like Roof. I don't agree with that one. Though. You're from the Chicago area. I am from Illinois, but no, I'm not gonna call it Roof. Are you excited for the state? Alex of says, oh, I know that road. Alex, if you ever hear me talk about the Little Caesars pizzas burning my thighs, that's where they were coming from. Okay, let's get back to this state of play. Yeah, I'm excited about state of play. Uh, I mean, I'm not like, I'm excited. I'm the appropriate level of excited. I'm excited to sit here on the big desk with all of us out here. All of us, including, I think, Paris Lily. Ugh. I think Paris Lily's coming too. What's that? You're a ghost? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? God, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can walk through Paris if you want. You can come say, hey. They can't hear you over there, but Paris Lily's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to join us for not only reacting to say to play, but then the games cast afterward. Come here. Well, look at this, look at this Final <laughs> Fantasy outfit. How you doing, Paris? I'm doing Lucky fantastic, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, sir. And I am excited to also comment on the state of play. Am I expecting big banger crazy stuff happening? Of course not. Of course not. What am I? Ex I'm just. We're going to hang out. We're going to talk about. This. We're going to see some Stellar Blade. All right, Rise of the Ronin. Fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah. I'm I'm very excited for the state of play. Oh, Just okay. for like when you I mean I'm somebody who I'm in the the target audience for a Stellar Blade. Like yeah, I look at that and I'm like that's my kind of action game. Yeah. Rise of the Ronin. I'm super excited about right. Like I want that game to be good. I'm I'm somebody who played Wolong Fallen Dynasty last Whoop. year and enjoyed it. Even though I think we all gave it a three out of five on the show, but it's a three out of five that I really enjoy. Sure. Right. It's one of those that I'm like oh no I really like this kind of game. I the thing that I am curious of with the state of play is do we already know every single thing that's showing up at the state of play? You know, because like we've been talking about in the last week and a half of, OK, we got the Until Dawn remastered yep. that, that's rumored. We got the um, Death Stranding 2 on the beach. We know Rise of the Ronin's going to be there. We know Stella Blade's going to be there. And like the list goes on of things that have just been either leaked or reported or talked about. And I'm like, what else do you even have to show at this thing that is Remember, Keeley said 15 games. We don't have a list of 15 games yet. I think if I go through KHDs, we might have 15 games. Fuck. Yeah. I hope that the state of play is a... I hope that this state of play is a good is a great <laughs> show. Show some VR stuff. Show they me why. Yeah, yeah. Show me why I should have a VR. What was the VR thing that was rumored? Uh, the Metro game. Yeah, the Metro. Metro. Game. That's what. Yeah, it yeah, is, yeah, yeah. We'll see, Paris. We'll see. This afternoon, Paris That's is reacting with us. Yeah, of course. Xbox. 
I'm wearing, literally wearing, wearing an X-Cash shirt. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're wearing the X-Cash shirt. <laughs> Uh, before we get into it, I actually do want to uh, give a quick shout out at the top of the show. Uh, of course, you're a big fan of Invincible. I'm a small fan of Invincible. I like the Invincible TV show. Yeah. Um, and they recently put up for pre-order the new Invincible uh, tabletop game. Oh. Yeah, Invincible Escape from Mars. I will link in the doc, Baird, if you want to uh, pull it up. I one. got sent this game. Uh, oh. Yeah, about like a month and a half ago. Oh, is this part of the giant box of games yeah. you got that this one Yeah, part of like a, a bunch of board games I got from Explain Skyrim what it is. You know, I love Invincible. I, I mean, I can just straight up read from okay, the, good the website. Hold on. The website's loading for me. Uh, based on the hit animated series from Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley, this game puts you in the position of either a hero or an astronaut attempting to escape Mars and make it back to Earth oh. without bringing a world-destroying parasite home with you. No pressure. Very smart. Invi Invincible's Escape from Mars is a social deduction game for four to ten players where your objective is to find your teammates, get on the rocket, and escape from Mars. But loyalties can change at any moment, including your own. That's smart. Yeah. I've not gotten a chance to actually check out this game yet because... Like you mentioned, I got a box full of t tabletop games. Yeah. Turns out it's a lot of work to organize friends to play these tabletop 100%. games. And yeah. so, like, I've had some board game nights with friends, but I've not gotten around to um, actually playing this one yet. This one, though, sounds way up my alley. Here's what I'd like to request. What up? I think you should hit up the one, the only, the Snowbike Mike, mm -hmm. and do a stream of this because I don't want to play it. Oh, I'm like, We could play it here at oh, the I'm table so or whatever. Down. Yeah, you get however many people and like can do it here live. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I wanted to give it a shout out because yeah, they sent me the thing. I think I I figured if it feels supposed to be for review or just hey, just to take this board game. But I wanted to at the very least give it a shout out because Hell yeah. it was very nice of them to send over these board games. And of course, I've I've also done work with Skybound like a, a year or so ago, two years ago, where I host helped hosted their um showcase at PAX, which included Skybound tabletop stuff nice. like this. And so uh shout out to that. And yeah, I'd love to get a stream going. Let's do it. It'd be a very fun time. Mike! We'll see if he, if he comes through. Enough about all that. Let's talk about today's stories, which include Greg's first night with Suicide Squad, a report about Ubisoft, and more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free, watch us record them live, and get a daily exclusive show. For a chance to be a part of the show, submit your thoughts and opinions as YouTube Super Chats as we go. Housekeeping for you, we're reacting to the PlayStation State of Play later today on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, that's going down at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Our Suicide Squad review so far is up on Gamescast. That's up YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by the Kind of Funny membership, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be. The Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have six stories today. A baker's dozen. I don't think Mike heard you. Do you want to call him again? No, it's fine. We'll tell him later. Fair enough. I also told me if he wants to come in later on this Suicide Squad because he played more. So we'll see what he does. Well, let's start off with story number one. We're going to talk about Greg's first night with Suicide Squad Hello. Uh, over the, the, the nighttime <laughs> when I was asleep. I got a Slack message from Greg that I didn't read until I got in this morning at like okay. 9, 9 a.m. And I was like, oh, shit, I got some Slack notifications here. And it was Greg being like, hey, like if um, there's room for it, I'd love to like talk about Suicide Squad because I, I played a lot more uh, over the over last night and I have more to say about it. Yeah. Greg, where do you want to start with Suicide Squad? Well, I appreciate you reading your Slack messages. In the morning. Yeah. I don't want you to do, ever worry about doing stuff at night like that. I should have scheduled send, but it was, I was, you know, I was, hept, I was like, ah, I was, I'm excited. I, I mean, I would have read it. I was just asleep. I know, I know. Yeah, I fall asleep well, I don't ever want you to think you see a Slack at 11 and you got to read it. You know what I mean? Anyways, I digress. Uh, this is fun because even though we got kind of forced into this, right? Mm. Suicide Squad, games of service, they needed servers to go live. So nobody got codes early. Everybody started yesterday. One of the things I've pitched to Tim before uh, when we come up on a, around a kind of funny day is maybe doing something where it's a show, but it's not, but it's kind of like Gregway, but it's not, but it's a thing where when we're reviewing games during embargoes, right? Mm. Basically at the end of your day or whatever, you give daily updates when it makes sense. You know, not that it's like a rigid schedule, but it is, Hey, I just got Tekken and I played three hours of it. And here's what I think right now. I'm excited to see. And we edit it all together to be one like tick, 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 like video of like day two, day three, day four. And then what the review actually is. Because mm. yesterday, of course, we got to play Suicide Squad when the servers went live and we got to work. And that meant we played about four, four and a half hours of it through a little bit of single player for me. Then a bunch of jabronis being clowns. Then me and Mike being more serious with it. Um, and we walked in here and we did a great games cast when, you know, me, Andy and Mike were all underwhelmed by it various levels of that and we talked about it and we we noodled it and blah blah blah. and we put up you know 
our review so far, which we often do, right, when we get to an embargo and we're not ready for it or we've only played so much and yada, yada, yada. Mm. But I appreciate this one being a games as a service, a live thing. You know, a friend would tell you the end game's what matters, blah, 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 that there's actually going to be reasons to come back and touch base with this one and see where we're at and what's going on with it. So, yeah, I went home last night and probably played conservatively three, three and a half, probably more like four, somewhere in there, three to four more hours of it. Uh, made a lot more progress in the story. Uh, it does appear like what we were talking about in the thing that the story is quote unquote short where it's not like three hours, six hours, but it's like, you know, that would put my total at what seven ish hours we'll say right now. And I'd mm -hmm. say it seems like I have three major story beats according to trophies to still go through. So I think I can, I'm going to knock some out before state of play and then probably knock it out tonight to be into the end game and see what that actually is. Yada, yada, yada. But one of the things I said on the review and that I said in my tweet, which I always hate because when you throw any part of any review into a tweet, that's what it becomes no matter what, yeah. right? I called the game on Gamescast soulless. And there's a lot of words that surrounded all of that. But I want to, after f putting the controller down last night, the first thing I wanted to do was grab onto that and talk about that. Mm -hmm. The game is soulless, but it's heartbreakingly soulless when we're talking about combat and when we're talking about open world traversal, mm -hmm. what I found so bittersweet last night is that the story is so good. The story is a really good DC Comics story. I still wish I wasn't the Suicide Squad, blah, 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 blah. But I'm enjoying what we're doing. I'm excited to see where we're going. And you can't wait to see how it's all going to end kind of thing, right? On top of that, last night I got to go. No, I mean, there's spoilers, but you'd expect this, but it's not like story spoilers. Mm -hmm. Last night I got to go into uh, the Daily Planet and really wander around at my leisure because I didn't have anybody else with me. And it wasn't like, you know, the, the tutorial and yada, yada, yada. It was like way late in the game I went in there and it was like, Walking over and like, where's Ron Troop's desk? There it is. What you walked, I walked by Steve Lombardi's desk and Deadshot made a comment about it. And like looking through all this really nerdy DC stuff, I would love going to Clark's desk and seeing a, a photo of the Kents and shit like that. Right? Like I was like, this is so fucking good. And like inside this environment, I'm like, this is so fucking cool. It's shocking and so sad that outside 98. 95% of what I've played, of course, is outside in Metropolis. And it is just so boring. It is so soulless. It is so rooftop after rooftop to fight purple guy after purple guy. Oh, surprise. Now there's a red guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just like to go into the Daily Planet last night, there was soul. The story has soul. But the problem is the connective tissue between those beats is still so, what were you thinking? And that's what I can't wrap my head around still as I talk about this game and lament this game is the fact that if you're trying to judge it against Arkham games or if you're trying to judge it against The Division, even The Avengers I'll toss in there, yeah. right? In terms of games as a service, we're running out and doing it. It just fails on both sides. Where when you think of playing an Arkham game, right? What, did you, what do you remember of being Batman? What do I remember? Yeah. I mean, the, the stealth stuff, the gadgets, the combat, it feeling meaty, all that. Yes, and that is just not here. Mm. There are no cool gadgets. There are no, I feel, cool upgrades. Like, again, you have this gear menu to put in your, for me, I'm dead shot, right? An AR rifle, a sniper rifle, my I, different kinds of grenades or whatever. But I'm not getting some wackadoo, hey, here's this crazy thing you didn't think about, or this is really going to change the way I play. The way I'm playing the game right now is the same way I played the game at the beginning of yesterday, right? Which is shoot these fucking people in the legs, then hit the shoulder button, right? So I get my shield back. Oh, this one guy needs a combination of shoulder buttons to take him down to make him vulnerable. It's like, it's not engaging on that combat level. It does not feel, oh my God, this feels like an Arkham game or it feels anything like that. I am just shooting these people. And again, shooting in the legs is not fun, I don't feel, to get mm. the shield back and da-da-da-da-da, which then takes me over to The Division, right? The Division, as someone who adores that game, right? It always was the idea that I'm leaving the base, I'm going across New York, I'm going across DC, I'm going over there to whatever it is, which means I'm slinking through the streets, Oh my God, there's a random group of people I have to engage with. Okay, no, I'm going to go this way to get around them because I don't want to do that. Okay, there's a side thing. There's a thing or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Suicide Squad, right? It is so large, this world, and not like too large, but so large that when it's like, all right, cool, you got to go to the main story beat all the way over there. 
I'm just like, cool. I jump up his dead shot and I boost and I fly and I have to stop. I have to come down and skim on the ground to get my boost back. And then I get back up and do the thing and do the thing. And occasionally I'll see them pop in these factions of enemies on the ground down there, but they're not a threat. They don't even see me. So why would I engage with them? Like for the XP? No, I don't feel any need to level up. I don't feel like I'm underpowered for any of this. Keep going, keep doing things, blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's a Riddler trophy there. There's this thing there. Like, even those are like you get the Riddler like you used to get in Arkham where it was like, oh, you know, I see this and this, that, that. So what do you do, Batman? And you're like, oh, okay, you click the thing, you do the thing. And it's like, yeah. those aren't feeling rewarding, nor are they feeling cool. Like, I'll get, and maybe if I really want to commit to trophies, I'll double back for them. I make my way across this entire map to get to the next story thing, to get the stilted cutscene thrown in, to get the stilted you ended the thing. Like the live service stuff is so stupid here of ending the game. I'm playing all by myself. Every time I end the mission, the boof, mission complete. Here's the thing. And then dead shots, the number, the captain of the team. And like, I'm like, skip, skip, skip. Like, I don't care about this. Oh, here's your mission reward. Division. Avengers, right? Mm -hmm. You swim in loot. Like, you are just borderlands, right? Guns raining down on you. You're sitting there. You're like, oh, is this? Is this? At the end of these missions, I'm getting an assault rifle, a shield pack. I like, is it a better number? Yeah, okay, apply it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not building out a loadout. Maybe towards the end of the game, I'll need to. Maybe well, I'll get to that. That was my done. question in, in talking about how, in the moment to moment, you, you, you have this soulless feeling of, like, yeah. man, I want more substance here. Like, there should be more here. Is there a, an idea of once you get further along, like, once you upgrade your character all the way, once you get deeper into the end game, that you'll start to feel that connected tissue between, like, the, how the gameplay stuff works together? I can't imagine that. You know what I mean? Friend of the show, Jordan Miller at VGC, he put up his review today and gave it a four out of five stars. He's, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, man, I do like this, and I do like this. But he's like, he likes what I don't like right now from his review that I was ca catching. So it's like, and he talks about the end game, though, being cool. I just read his tweet because I don't want to spoiled. Yeah. Um, I don't see how they would flip this and change this again, where it's like, even to go to something as hated as the Avengers, which I enjoyed, right? I enjoyed it because I had the hero fantasy, right? I when I'm throwing, I'm gonna throw cap shield. I'm gonna, it's gonna come back, and if I time it right, I can kick it back at them, and then I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna apply that, and da 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 da. da. It was also, oh man, Sean's playing Thor, and it looks cool to be Thor. I want to roll a Thor and do that. I, me and Mike talked about this on the review yesterday. We don't even see each other in the game, right? So it's not at any point like, man, Harley looks like fun. Like I don't know what the hell's going on, or whatever. Yeah, it's the fact that like. In Avengers, you run into people like, all right, well, they're weak in the head or they have the thing on their back or da 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 da. These guys, like, even when it is like, okay, these guys have tapped into Speed Force, so they're red, so they're a bit faster. I was like, okay, maybe there's no, I'm still just shooting the majority of them. Once in a while, again, it'll pop up and say, do the shoulder button combination to get the, you know, the shield off from the construct or something. I forget what it's called, but do that. And it's like, this is so brain dead and it doesn't feel good. Back to the division, slinking through the streets, getting into cover, popping out. When I did get into combat, it was that hit him in the head, right? That thing, the big number pops. Like, oh, yeah, I feel great about that. Or flank this or try to barely survive. Like, this is just purple guy after purple guy after purple guy on rooftop after rooftop. Like, mm. duh, duh, duh. And it's just like, what the shit is going on? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, again, we complained yesterday on the show about the lack of mission variety. And so, you know, last night I got to a story thing, no spoilers, but it was basically like you get the cutscene. It's like, all right, we got to protect this truck. And so now I'm walking, I'm doing an escort mission with this truck. And I'm like, well, this isn't fun. Mm -hmm. It's different though. At least this is something I hadn't seen before, but it is still, oh, we're, oh no, there's people on the rooftops. Oh, fuck, fly up the rooftop, shoot them, whatever. Not two hours later, guess what? I'm protecting a different truck. I'm like, oh, okay, we've, we've added this yeah. mission type to the, the sandbox. That's great. This is very... Very exciting. And it's like this weird thing of like, I am still excited to play after the show until we go to stay to play because I want to see the story through. I'm hopeful that something in the end game will be like, you know what I mean? Like again, with them talking about Elseworlds and the Joker, like what are you doing with all that? How is that going to work into this? That, that could be cool, but I just don't see what would happen that would hook me to go, oh man, I need to play more of this. I need to do yeah. more of it. Oh, I want to call Mike to the stage. Mikey! Because I'll, I'll, stream I'll stream Tekken as I do. Do you want to bring a chair? Do you want to get a stick, Mike? What do you want to do? He's bringing a chair. He's bringing a chair. Fair, yeah. I'll throw up the mid mic. I've become a big Tekken person lately, obviously. I've been, I've been hooked on it. Uh, that's a different game. That's Street Fighter. Um, Tekken is more like I'm a cat. Enough cuts. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky, yeah, Chloe. Damn. I'm a big bear. That, see, that's that, that's God, what I'm talking about, it, or a kangaroo, it. you know. Um, but yeah, I, I I finished streaming, then I went over to Mike's stream, and Mike was streaming some um, Suicide Squad with the title "Is It Fun Solo?" Mm -hmm. Mike, is it fun solo? Uh, yes, it is more fun solo than what I experienced multiplayer-wise. Mm -hmm. I think Greg 
Greg, you did a great job cooking up and saying all that. So I, I, I don't have much to follow with Greg, but I will talk about well, the yeah. games as a service aspect. I want to talk about multiplayer because playing solo is fun because there's no team up moves in this bless. There is never a yeah. time where me and Greg come together and smack X at the same time and do some cool team up move. So it's not like I need anyone else. The bots are just there mindlessly shooting, barely killing anyone. Sometimes they come to resurrect me. So really, in my mind, you could have just put me as Captain Boomerang by myself and I would have ran around the same way that I'm doing right now. So yeah, I don't see myself wanting to play with others, especially I'm trying to wrap my head around the games as a service experience here. What is bringing me back to say, I got to grind this for the next six months. This is what I want to play. I want to stick around until they bring the Joker because that's not what I want to do. And I don't see a reason why, especially Greg, you hit it so well. I played every single side mission there is so far in the game Hmm. for another six hours of this game. And they're all repetitive. Nothing is challenging. Nothing is new and different. Hmm. You go to hack and she says, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to defend this point for two and a half minutes. What you get is a new challenge unlock. So now I can have four challenges per day instead of two. Mm. And the challenges, bless, are very generic, and they're just giving you crafting material. Mm. That's not fun. And as Greg said, every time I finish a mission, it ends with a cutscene, and I get one gun. I have a list of guns. I barely have enough guns right now to fill out my whole Suicide Squad roster, and that's a problem, right? Because I look at it and I go, man, i got to make sure everybody's equipped. And I go in there, and they go, well, you only got two guns here, and they're all shared between everything else, and none of them are special, so what, what am I working for for that guy? I go to Rick Flag. I go, okay, Rick Flag, tell me what you want to do. Hey, I got this Pokeball. I want you to go to rooftop after rooftop, collect four people, come back. Guess what? I got a new arms manufacturer for you. New people are going to make you guns, and all the guns are the exact same. So what is it about, what is it about single player that you're finding more fun? Because it sounds like that... You're not getting now, that Andy different will tell of an experience you, playing with other people. The game will run a little bit better, as Andy will say here on the game that side of the things. Fun factor? <laughs> wow, the cross-examiner from the senator <laughs> yeah, yeah. from I Cleveland. think it's a legit question. No, I love How it. I love that it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's factor. a great question there, Ben. The, the game performing better means that I have more agency in what I'm doing, and I'm not going to try to... Like, I find my fun in really kind of complex combat situations and trying to pop off and yeah with any game it's like when avengers came out and everybody was like oh the combat's repetitive and that one clip came out of captain america popping off with all the crazy combos it's like you can make your own fun i find the game a lot more fun solo when i played last night because it ran better and i'm able to pull off i have more agency in the moves that i'm pulling off and in the scenarios that i'm creating and going to certain areas i'm not having to deal with like well if i re- do i really want to pull that off or am i going to deal with frame rate or stuttering issues i'm having a lot more fun solo that being said i still don't think it's like a, a must play or you know go out and go get it right now yeah. but i think it's a lot more justifiable of a 70 dollars purchase for me now if you were looking forward to this experience at all where last yesterday i would have been like maybe don't bother with this yeah. you know oh and hey, let's get in here and end of the mission, not having to wait on everyone to slowly go through all four of those slides. I mean, we still have to do the end of mission thing, but at least when you're solo, we can tear through that and keep the game going in some sort of flow state besides sitting there and pausing every time to see the Penguin's loot box drop down in a five-second cutscene. That's crazy. Now, Paris, you came in, and I heard you over. Uh, I heard yes. you speaking with Mike about what you thought of the game. It sounds like you're a bit higher than the other guys. Yes, I was watching the game cast live yesterday, and as you all talked about Suicide Squad, and I go, they've lost their minds. <laughs> in this sense, you're, a lot of your criticism is, is valid, but I, I'm having fun with the game. I, I think that's just the, the simplest way to put it, that, yeah, the enemy types aren't very diverse. Yeah, the scenarios are the damn same. You're going to the rooftops, clear them out and all that. But the voice acting on these characters are so strong. Like, Samoa Joe really needs to start doing it full time. Samoa Joe that, that, That's Char. how good it was. Like, I'm invested in that story. But like I was telling Mike before, I think ultimately I'm having fun with Suicide Squad. I think it'll be great. But this is not going to be something that I'm playing six months from now. I'm going to play it, enjoy it for what it is. I'm probably going to put it down and move on to something else. See, my thing, and I'm with you, the story's great, and I'm loving it, and the performances are, I I like what I'm getting. But my thought last night when I'm doing it, right, was like that tissue of what I'm doing as the player, I was very much like, 
if I, if somebody was like, oh man, I'm interested, I just tell them to watch the cutscenes when they get put up on YouTube, right. right? And that's my thing of like why I think that that right why I said on the games cast uh, and everything I've said tonight, I would still say I'm trending to a two out of five on our scale. Of bad, not that the game is bad, broken, you're falling through the world, but just the fact of like why are you playing this? Like I get the story is great and all that stuff's yeah. awesome and like yeah yeah yeah, but it's like why are we getting these loot box screens and then why is it all look the yeah. same like this? Why why were they forced into making this thing and why can't I just be in the Daily Planet? Because yeah, yeah. I'm climbing the leaderboard. I'm trying not to be behind you this whole goddamn time. <laughs> no, I'm on top of the clan leaderboard and I'm never going down, baby. They got a leaderboard in this game? That shit's crazy, dude. Oh. Wait, what's the leaderboard for? Missions and uh, you can you can actually have a solo leaderboard. There's a duo leaderboard for your mission rank and your levels. It's it's an odd one. Like how well you do the missions is yeah. what okay. And yeah, yeah. There's and I think it's like yeah. Uh, there's a cumulative story total for your thing that I'm on top of our clan leaderboard for yeah. right now. Yeah, because yeah, I think I'm just further. I think when everybody yeah, you know, he, gets there, he's further, uh, and that's what yeah. I replayed, and so I could see where B Greg picked up and kept going. Also, the microtransactions. Bless, you know I love a good microtransaction. He yeah. does. And oh, I do. love a good storefront. And that's the leading charge of these games as a service. So let's talk about that real quick, Bless. Mm -hmm. The costumes, incredible. They look great. They are flashy. They are unique. Xbox. They <laughs> look awesome in cutscenes because every outfit you put on them, they'll wear in the cutscenes. And it's highly produced. It looks great, right? Mm -hmm. My Harley Quinn in the Wonder Woman outfit, so awesome. Good. King Shark in the Superman outfit, awesome stuff. The skins look great. Let me tell you, but Rocksteady, man. if you had made a game that had Batman and Superman in it and Green Lantern Yo. in it and Wonder Woman, I'd be spending a lot of money on but these suits, but I don't care about these blessed. guys. We look at that and we go, man, okay, we've hit the normal Fortnite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty games as a service market here. $10 a skin, $5 for an emote. An animation mm -hmm. that your Harley Quinn can do a peace sign with is $5 a pop, bless. And this doesn't go just for Suicide Squad. This goes for all these, but somewhere... Yeah. We've let the market dictate that a, an animation in a game that should be sold is five dollars plus. Let me which tell you about this insane. game called Tekken Eight. That lets you customize the hell out of your character. Yeah, for free, for free, for and, free. Yeah. So here, and then on top of that, bless you know. It's but do just, you feel like you're getting anything if it's free? It's a feeling attachment to your outfits. Wouldn't you rather pay twenty bucks for I love my them? outfits. No, <laughs> absolutely not. The man made two B. It looks crazy. Yeah, people are making fucking Leon from Resident Evil. It's a wild. I one. saw somebody make Scorpion from Mortal Kombat in Tekken. It looks fucking insane. So I guess my final question on this, Greg, yeah. is I guess I have a, maybe a two-part question. I love it. One, when are we playing together? I agree. No, God. <laughs> uh, how like what what do you think went wrong here? Do you think it was uh they shouldn't like this shouldn't have been a game as a service to begin with? Do you think it was, oh, we needed more time to cook? Do you think it was, oh, the game just isn't good? Like I I, I think this is the thing that gets lost sometimes of like, you know, games come out and they come out and there are Two out of five, three out of five, or like not ten out of tens. Yeah, because yeah. that sometimes people just make bad games, or people just make okay games. It's right? incredibly hard to make a game, period. Yeah, let alone make a great make game. something that is incredible. So, where do you think it all went wrong here? I mean, my thought when I was, you know, I came home last night, and as always, Jen humors me and says, "How you doing?" And, I, and she's, and then she knew I was doing all the Suicide Squad. Shit. So she's like, "So how's the game?" Right. So I got to sound a bunch of things off of her. And one of the ways when I was in the middle of one of my rants, I was like. Let me stop you right there and let me explain what this is, right? It is a campaign that you play with a story that'll then open up to this end game that we don't really know what it is, nor do we know why we'd want to do it. You got these heroes that are getting stuff, but maybe they're not who you want to be. Maybe they don't even look like you want them to look or whatever, right? <laughs> then you're hopefully going to get this Joker thing. They're talking about this Elseworlds thing. So maybe there's going to be characters and story. And I'm like, what does this sound like? This is fucking Avengers again, hmm. period. And I say that as a fan of what Avengers was, right? But it is that same idea of why is this happening? Why are we doing a campaign? Why is this talented single player studio making this games as a service multiplayer thing? Like why? I think the answer to both of those it all is both. I know, and I don't want to ever be the guy who just paints a broad brush and gives you a skewed picture. Yeah. I would assume studio leadership and, or the pa publisher parent company, right? Uh, you know, of course, square being for crystal at the time. Yeah. Uh, WB being for Rocksteady here. I think it was both of those games were fucking games as a service are a hit and the good times are going to roll forever. Look at Fortnite. Look at battle passes. Look at Apex. Let's fucking go. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think Avengers came out of the gate as fast as it could, which fucked it over because it didn't have anything ready. And then it just colossally collapsed. And then I think at this one, it's the sunk cost theory where you're just like, all right, well, 
Games as a service are not popular anymore, for the most part. They're actually looked at as kind of a money grab, and everybody kind of hates them, and everybody wants to go back to single player. And again, WB's got to be looking at the success of Hogwarts Legacy last year going, fuck, yeah. fuck, you know what I mean? But you figure they have this, and they had Gotham Knights, which was the, hey, play by yourself or have friends drop in and call it. And I think it is that both of those were greenlit at a time when they thought the good times would roll forever, and I think Rocksteady is Rocksteady, and... and has an eye for quality and wanted to make it as good as it could be. And that meant it gestated for so long. And again, I think it is a studio and a team that really hadn't done this before. You know what I mean? Like we can look at Fortnite and I, I, you, I'd like, I'm going to present this case and you tell me as the apex person, if this is the case for them even. Right. But you look at Fortnite and you look at what they've done. They're the biggest thing in the world. And you have to remember, go all the way back. Fortnite was a failing game that was about probably to get fucking canceled. And they were like, we really like PUBG. We're going to try this battle royale mode for free. Do people, and then people fucking loved it. And then they iterated and built and did things and changed. And like, you know what I mean? Where it's like both Avengers and uh, both crystal, I'll say for Avengers and Rocksteady for suicide squad did not get to have a minor league game. They did not get to do a, Hey, we're going to come out here and, and swing and try a few things and see if it works thing. It was, we are committed and we're going and how hard can it be? Yeah. And I'm sure they knew it was hard, but it what they didn't get a chance to go and iterate and do it. And you look at, this compared to Avengers, and it's the same thing of like, I'm, I'm just the, I'm the Imran Khan of this in the same way Imran was of Avengers when I enjoyed it, right? Yeah. Where it's just like, I just don't get this and I don't get what I'm going to, I assume I'm going to roll credits and walk away and be done with it. And I assume when Joker drops and if they get to more people after that, if that's even their full blown plan for it, maybe I'll watch those cutscenes when it comes or maybe it'll be told that it's awesome and I should go back and I will, but it's like, Am I like what? I, and again, like this is, a, a, you know, both the fun part of this and then also the very honest part of this again, like in, uh, you know, I, I celebrate 17 years in, in, in the industry today, right? This is when Dunham hit me up uh, with my email, which means that 17 years tomorrow I get hired at IGN, right? And you don't usually get to see this part of the process where I have not rolled credits on the game. I do not know what the end game is. I don't know what they're teasing because I don't, I, I'm not there yet. I would love to come back tomorrow on this show or Monday and whatever and be like, yo, this happened and now I get it and the enemies are different and varied and I, or, or they're not, but I understand what I'm building toward when I'm going, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. Yeah. I don't see that happening. I see me rolling credits and moving on to my next review that I already have waiting for me. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. My second question I was going to yeah. ask, I, I might hold off actually okay. to your point, right? Like I was going to ask, where do we go from here? Like where does Suicide Squad go in the next six months to a year are we able to build back up is there something they can do to bring people back or whatever but i want to let you roll credits first and like actually get into the end game before we talk about that because i think you'll be more informed with the answer then fair enough uh one thing i want to toss in came through uh the youtube chat while we were going there it came from straight shot it's a bit broken but i think it gets the i get the point because a review of this 70 dollars got to be comparable when you got to review hell divers next week mm-hmm. I, I get i think where we're driving right because of we got we, I, I don't Fully like Hell Divers is a forty dollar game, but I understand what you're saying. And what I'd like to say is that, as of now, from what I understand, like we do, we don't have Hell Divers codes. So I'm expecting Hell Divers to be the exact same situation of like we're waiting for servers to go live till anybody gets their hands on it, right? Yeah. At which point, right now, the day is booked the exact same way it was for Suicide Squad, where it will be. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna play at my desk. Then we're gonna stream it uh, together with the stream Jabroni Boys. Then we're gonna play, and then I think it's a four o'clock PS. I love you XOXO live review. We're gonna do. For everybody, just like we did Gamescast yesterday, or a view so far to see where we're at. So I'm always excited about that, and it's a, a fun new way to tackle games as a service games. Now, maybe codes come out early, and I'm, I'm wrong, and we have an embargoed thing, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to story number two. But you before we do, it. let's move on to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can go and get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. Kind of Funny turns nine years old today. We could have made it nine days without your support. That's why 2024 is all about doubling down on our shows and making it simpler than ever for you to get the most out of our content. Our revamped Kind of Funny membership is your one-stop shop for all our amazing content, which now includes on a weekly basis, the Kind of Funny podcast, In Review, the Kind of Funny games cast, PS I Love You XOXO, the Kind of Funny X cast, the brand new series Kind of Funny Game Showdown. Five episodes of Kinda Funny Games Daily and five exclusive Greg Way vlogs. And five days of streaming fun with me and the gang here in our newly revamped streaming space. It's gonna be filled with a ton of laughter and a whole lot of shenanigans. We'll see you there. 
That's more than 20 pieces of content a week from an 11 person independent team in San Francisco. That's a lot. And to get the most out of it, all we're asking for is $10. $10 gets you the Kinda Funny membership, and that entitles you to ad-free versions of the shows, the ability to watch the podcast live as we record them, and the exclusive access to my daily show, Greg Way. You can get your Kinda Funny membership on patreon.com slash kindoffunny or youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Yes, we are expanding our Kinda Funny membership offering to YouTube so people can take full advantage of the platform they prefer. If you want to go above and beyond the Kind of Funny membership to support us, we will still have higher Patreon tiers, albeit with some changed up perks. We just wanted to make the message as clear as possible that the $10 Kind of Funny membership is for the masses to get all the core content people love. Everything above that is very appreciated. The support means the world to us. You all are the best. But the $10 Kind of Funny membership available on both Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny and YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games is where we see the value of what we do. Kind of Funny is a dream come true and we wouldn't have it without you. We hope if you've ever enjoyed the content, you can support us for at least a month as we prepare for our biggest year ever. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. And we're back. I want to shout out two super chats that we got in. Just a super chat. Uh, Mara writes in and says, the Invincible podcast guys just posted a video of them playing Escape from Mars. So sh shout out to them. Uh, that's awesome. And then Opwinus Prime uh, says, they could have made another Arkham Batman game, heavily featured the Justice League in the story, and it would have printed money. Should never have been Suicide Squad. Yeah. I mean, I, you're not wrong. And I think, you know, you, but you, again, and I, we're not there. Mm -hmm. Studio heads publisher heads whatever yeah. it is uh, maybe even the team being excited by what they saw out there i mean like that could be fun also what could be different you know what i mean in terms of stretching your legs as a developer blah 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 yeah but they're you know we're not that far removed from single player games are dead and blah 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 and like that, and i think that's the tough thing is you know we talk about how hard it is to make a video game it is hard also to do video game business right like especially when you're trying to think of how long it takes to make and put out a video yep. game and then the, like what you're doing in terms of trying to predict where this where the industry is going to be in it's that impossible time. right yeah like, if yeah. i start making a video game right now that's going to be a triple a game let's say it takes five to six years to come out i think avengers or not avengers uh, suicide squad was what like seven years or something like that i'm trying to think of what the industry is going to be like in 2029 and i have no idea like what battle royale craze or what like you know remakes are now the thing or whatever like what is the craze that's going to happen yeah. or what is the dip that's going to happen in the genre that i'm trying to make currently that's going to affect how it does when it comes out because yeah like you're to your point there was a time where we were talking about yeah single players are dead like oh we got to pivot all this stuff and i as much as we put it on publishers and i think a lot of it probably should be put on publishers i think yeah like studio heads or people that are creative in the studio also want their games to be successful right if i am the lead of a studio and i am trying to think about the well-being of the people that uh, work under, under me or the creatives that are working alongside me and i have to go all right let's make another single player game at a time where we're kind of nervous to make single player games or you know, maybe a pub my publisher came to me and went, hey, if you make this kind of online service game, you might make... We want more of this in our portfolio. Yeah, and like you might make three times the amount of money, which means that your studio gets funded better and all this stuff. Then you might be able to go, oh man, that is going to be good for the studio. Let's make that kind of game. And I mean, like, let's take this all back to the stories we have literally every other day. I don't know if there's one today. There wasn't earlier, but are there layoffs? <laughs> Did there layoffs on oh, there? Yeah. So break there you go. Breaking news. So let, me t let me just take it though, but like... The reason you are getting these layoff stories is that these people made bets on what they thought the industry would look like, on what they thought the game, next game thing would be. Mm -hmm. And to your point, like I talk about it all the time, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have it. You mentioned it, I guess. But the super chat, this would have printed money, right? Yeah. It sure would have. But again, when you are talking to the wheels of capitalism and greed and shareholders and big, it's not that you, oh man, this would make a lot of money. Cool. I want to make fucking Fortnite money. Mm -hmm. I want to make as much. I want not only do I want to make Fortnite money at launch. I want the spigot turned on the entire time, pouring that money in through costumes and transactions and emotes and dot da 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 da. Right? Like there is the money, 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 evil side of that, right? But mm -hmm. there, then there is the well, we want to keep growing, we want to yeah. keep doing things, and blah, blah blah. And like, there's so much wrapped up in that conversation that. A little bit of profit isn't as good as a lot of bit of profit. And I, and I think that even to like the rock, rock steady making Suicide Squad thing, right? Like I could see the conversation being, hey, like if we make a Suicide Squad game as a game as a service and it's a hit, like imagine how 
imagine what position that puts us in to make more Arkham games or make whatever game we want to make because we have this thing that's making money for us on the side as we go so we don't have to worry about taking a risk with every single single player game that we put out yeah. that's going to make money and then have a drop right um so it's a difficult business to operate in and i definitely feel for the people that have to like figure out figure all that shit out it's not easy now granted we see people make dumb decisions in it. Shout out to Embracer Group, right? Like yeah. they're like, like <laughs> they're very obvious bad decisions. Shout out made. to these idiots. Yeah, <laughs> but like I think at the same time, it is a difficult uh, business to operate in. Um, I do want to sh- um, uh, bring up some breaking news. Uh, this comes from Jess Co- uh, Cogswell, homie over at GameSpot. She tweeted out that GameSpot had layoffs today. Uh, she says her job is okay and she'll be okay, but uh, this really hurts and sucks. And she goes on about it. But um, there, I guess we don't have a number on like how many people were laid off uh, from breaking, GameSpot. Yeah. Uh, this is breaking during the show, but our hearts, of course, go out to our friends at GameSpot. Of course. Um, and yeah, that sucks. Story number two. Let's talk about what's going on at Ubisoft. Uh, Layoffs, this, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this is, uh, well, we'll see. This comes from uh, Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming. Uh, Tom Henderson put up an article uh, yesterday titled Inside Ubisoft from Low Morale to Internal Tensions. It is a longer article. I've condensed it a bit just for the sake of the Roper Report. But if you want to read the full thing, you can go over to Insider Gaming and check out the full article. There are some tidbits here, though, that are newsworthy or speculation worthy at the very least. As industry-wide layoffs continue to plague headlines, Ubisoft, the sixth largest video game company by employees, is at a crossroads. Internally, morale is at an all-time low, and employees fear that the publisher could be next to see a major restructuring, inevitably resulting in a high number of people losing their jobs. The lack of job security is the current feeling felt across the industry, but as Ubisoft leadership continues its never-ending ambition to pursue trends, usually resulting in, a wa- in wasted resources or lackluster results, it won't, be, it won't be them shown the door if the company needs to reduce costs. In recent years, Ubisoft's strategy has moved away from innovation and creativity and led the company on a wild goose chase to produce what was popular at the time. And this goes back to the conversation we were just having. From trying to pr- produce the next colossal free-to-play uh, battle royale to its desire for NFTs and Web3, the never-ending pursuit has left countless projects being canned, talent being wasted, and a massive amount of money being flushed down the toilet. At one point in late 2021 to early 2022, the company had around a dozen Battle Royale games in development, sources said. Many of these projects ultimately failed to captivate players during playtesting and were subsequently canceled. Uh, Jumping ahead in the article, looking ahead, the publisher's desires currently lie with uh, live service and extraction-based shooters. Insider Gaming understands that at least three major extraction-based shooters are in development at the publisher. The Division Heartland... The Division Heartland still isn't out. Release date, TBA. (laughs) Far Cry's Project Maverick, tentative 2025 release, and a new IP set in World War II that is forecasted to be released around 2026 to 2027. Whether or not all of these games will be released remains to be seen, but for those working on the projects, it's feared that once again, uh, the boat may have sailed by the time they are released. Now I'm jumping way ahead in the article. Despite the hardship that Ubisoft continues to face, the company does have one of its best lineups of games in recent memory. If there are no further delays, Ubisoft has two major releases planned for this year. Star Wars Outlaws, which it says is first half of 2024, and Assassin's Creed Codename Red, which is, uh, which, which is said to be second half of 2024. In 2025 and 2026, expect a new mainline entry to Ghost Recon uh, Project Over, set during the fictional Naaman War. Two new Far Cry titles, including a multiplayer game, Project Maverick, and a new mainline entry into Far Cry, Project Blackbird. Two new Assassin's Creed games, Hexy and Invictus, and the already announced Splinter Cell remake. Beyond that, expect several yeah. new Assassin's Creed games, including an Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake, currently known as Project Obsidian. Should Ubisoft find success with these upcoming games, the feeling both within and around the company is likely to change. But first, a strong change in direction needs to happen. <laughs> so I hear, what, like, what, I, I feel like I always have this conversation with Tim because it happens to always be me sure, and Tim when sure. there's big Ubisoft stories happening. But like, what's your temperature check on like, what is going on at Ubisoft? Like, how are the winds blowing for you? It's funny you ask that because, of course, when I talk about Ubisoft, and I talk about where the winds are blowing. Yeah. I say Here Baird hit my money. music. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Hold on. Don't panic. Everyone don't panic. Welcome Maddie, back. I the disclaimer. Welcome. It's not there yet. We haven't gotten. Right, Welcome right. back to your favorite kind of funny games daily segment. Uh, Greg Money Talks, where I talk to you about stock advice, even though I'm not a financial expert and you shouldn't take this. If you remember way back. 
in like October, mm-hmm. maybe even earlier than that. I said, yo, <laughs> the stock on Ubisoft's down. You should buy some. And then a Kevin gave me permission that it wouldn't be a conflict of interest if I used $100 of my own money to do this sure. just to monitor it. So if you remember, I bought Ubisoft stock at $5.33. It is currently trading at $4.41. So I'm not doing hot right that's, now. That's not a good thing, That's right? not good. Okay. But if you can weather the storm, I would suggest buying more <laughs> right now. All right, I'm just saying it looked bad. For, it looked bad when games stop. Did it too? Remember? God, Barrett is so good at yeah, this. Yeah, he's really. Good. It's, he's got to be using AI, right? I, Bear, are you using some kind of tracker? For I, nah, dude, I just know how to click head and tear me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it looked bad. <laughs> GameStop kept going down too. But eventually, that was because of the Wall Street bet thing on Reddit, right? Mm. Right. So I'm just saying. They've either got to come back at some point or get bought. So I, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't understand stocks. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Like with Ubisoft, I really want them to come back. And I, I, I yeah, there's like, there's a lot to dig it. I mean, so yeah, back. like, yeah, like what's the question? Like, what is my read on Ubisoft? Yeah. I think Ubisoft, it's going to get really fucking bleak. Yeah. I think it's going to be a huge gunk. We are laying off a lot of people that I unplug something. I'm so sorry. Yeah, oh, do you know that it's not actually like in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, anyways, it's going to get uh, my prediction based on just what we continue to talk about and see in Ubisoft searching for an identity. And then the fucking fact that there is this God <laughs> awesome story here, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at the, the front monitor turned into a beach for a second. Yeah, I know. That's what he came to fix. <laughs> Looking ahead, the publisher's desires currently lie with live service and extraction based shooters, right? Mm. Based on everything we just fucking talked about for uh, Suicide Squad, let alone the thing I say over and over and over again about PlayStation's, hey, fucking Concord, and here's the fucking Fair Games, and it's like, wait, which one was which? And there was this, which one's the PVEBE, but this is the EB? Like, yeah. no. That is, you, that is a bad road to go down. Don't do that. But again, once the track is laid and you're off to the races, you're off to the races. I digress. Ubisoft, if I'm shaking my crystal ball, I think it's going to be a dramatic, hey, we are axing lots and lots of yeah. people's roles and we are going to become a smaller, leaner, leaner Ubisoft that is, we are making an Assassin's Creed game. And I don't think it'll be every year because I think their teams will be that dramatically reduced. Yeah, I think it'll be that we are making Splinter Cell. We are making, uh, 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 like I said, Assassin's Creed. We are continuing. <laughs> Shane McMahon for the music. No, uh, I don't think people can see Yeah, that. I know. I know. It's just, it fucks me up. Sorry. Uh, and we're making a Far Cry, right? And we're doing that. And we're yeah. committing to that. And we're moving that way. Like, I just don't think. I, I <laughs> think that they, they're to the point where it's going to get really dark. And I think then, I and I mean, again, this is me being jaded with how it all works. Mm-hmm. They'll lay off all these things. Again, the stock will go down. They'll do all these different stuff. Maybe they get bought and then somebody else acquires all the IP and can do whatever the fuck they want with it. And maybe, because I mean, imagine that like, you know, let's take away like what we just saw with Xbox of like, hey, we bought Activision Blizzard deals close. Yeah, billion, $69 billion. Hey, we're laying off a whole like 2,000 people or whatever. If Sony bought them, right? And it was like, cool, these teams are going to get the time to actually sit with an Assassin's Creed or hey, we've done this and Sony Bend is going to make Far Cry and there, you know, we're giving these, you know, a whole bunch of exciting things could happen there with a whole bunch of bad things that would have to happen to get there. Yeah. I think that's how the IPs would rebound. I think sh- shrinking the teams and getting a focus in there again would be good in the overall because I think then it would be this success story of Ubisoft got too big, too bloated, came down, lost a whole bunch of people and did it, but now they've risen from the actions that are making the kind of games people want again. Yeah. I, I have been surprised that we've not gotten like a big report yet of ubisoft layoffs like in, even in the last fall in the last month of what yeah. we've seen between a bunch of different huge like riot and epic and all this stuff yeah i'm surprised we've not gotten ubisoft news yet and it makes me wonder like one when slash if it's going to happen soon and then also like is this money be is are they banking on things like all right let's see how prince persia does which somebody in chat like mentioned like prince 300, persia. 000, i think I yeah i saw somebody just mentioned like oh yeah it only sold 300 300 000, which is wild uh but then also and again uh-huh. Let's go back to, sorry, just to no, yeah, talk about a little bit of success versus a lot of bit of success, right? For me, student of the game, looking at this thing, Prince of Persia, a thing that old folks like me like, you know what I mean, have a lot of fond memories for. Hey, we're making a 2D, yeah, 2D Metroidvania. 300,000, I'm like, hey, pretty good job, right? All right. I, that's m- more than yeah. I thought, you know what I mean? But and like, I even say wild, well, more so just for quality of video game, yeah, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah a lot of people sure. would argue that's that that's sure. probably the best Ubisoft game in years. Right? But it's what? back to the same thing of like, you know, that's you and me talking to an audience that's like you and me. That like, how many, exactly. how many new games do we play a month? And to your point of, 
you, you, uh, Ubisoft becoming, hey, we're just making Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. I wonder how much they're banking on Star Wars Outlaws. Please save yeah. us. Oh, like, yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah, Outlaws, yeah. please save our souls. Because that, I mean, I don't know I, I don't know where the first half of 2024 uh, is coming from here in, in Tom Henderson's article. I don't know if that is part of the report or if he's just like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's going to come out in the first half. But if you are talking about a year for Ubisoft that is, hey, we're putting out two major games. Obviously, we just made, put out Prince of Persia, but we don't consider that major. We're putting out two major games, Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed uh, Red. Those both have banger potential. You're talking about a big Star Wars game that is open world and Star Wars has that Star Wars name. And that is, I think, a big, that has the potential to be a cash cow for uh, Ubisoft on the single player side. And then also Assassin's Creed Red as well. Assassin's Creed's do well. I mean, like, putting on Assassin's Creed in, in Japan. Assassin's like, Creed Red, based on just the fact that it's an Assassin's Creed, like the RPGs, yeah. and it's in Japan. One of my most anticipated games of the year. Same. I haven't seen a screenshot from it. I just can't wait. My my question with that, though, is, like, do we... I, I bring it up every time we talk about the future of Assassin's Creed. Like, is that still going to be part of Assassin's Creed Infinity? Or I, Infinite I think Infinity is just a state of mind. I don't think Infinity <laughs> is a real thing. You're, every, right now, is. everything's a part of Assassin's Creed. This show is a yeah. part the of Assassin's Creed. The way they talked about it, it sounded like it's a thing. I think Assassin's Creed Infinity it literally is going to be like if you're playing on PC in the way that you have Ubisoft Connect as like a launcher or whatever. I think there's gonna be a tab that says Assassin's Creed Infinity, and that's just how you launch your Assassin's Creed games. Whereas on PlayStation, so you think or Xbox, it's only a PC thing, and like if it's just if you're playing on PlayStation, it's just you you have I think, a copy of AC Red. I think it's a way they talk about the Assassin's Creed universe. My, my, if you want my take on it, and mm-hmm. thank you for bringing it up. Great, uh, I love talking about this thing. Is I think that they first off. Shout out to them at the time when they did finally talk about that. They were like, hey, we're noodling this. Like, this yeah. is, a, I don't think we hear about that again until like Shry or somebody gets used to go, mom, whatever, pinned down. He's like, oh, no, we actually are sunsetting that idea. Yeah. I think that I is. I feel like if that was still a thing, I feel like that would get in the way. And I feel of, like that is like, whatever the plan was of that being a launcher or that being a thing and yada, 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 I think the writing is on the wall that like, we need people paying $70 a pop for each one of these games and they mm-hmm. need to be able to understand what it is. You can, back to my point about Prince of Persia, that's not a game that speaks to every gamer, right? Like Assassin's Creed is, again, a franchise that has broken out of us, including you, listener, viewer, right? Of people who play, like I was talking about Poe, like Poe loves Assassin's Creed. He's way behind on him, but like, that's an IP that matters to him. It's an IP that matters to mainstream people in Walmart. Yeah. And so I don't think it's time to get creative with like, hey, that'd be a very different Ubisoft, a much more successful Ubisoft that doesn't need win after win after win right now Yeah. for sh- shareholders like me. Yeah. And I'm in the, for, for shareholders like you, I think the idea of going back to Embracer talking about we need to exploit Lord of the Rings. And so now they have all these studios yep. shutting down, a lot of people being laid off, projects being canceled. And you assume in the next few years, you're only going to see them announce lord of the rings game or N- a lord of the rings game right like no. that's gonna be their thing because they know the money is in, uh, is in that or at least like there's secure money in that as opposed to like all this theoretical money putting out um uh, uh what was the ps2 shooter called that that was gonna come back time splitters yeah, yeah you know yeah. that's like okay we'll see if we make money off of this right whereas lord of the rings they know they're gonna make money off of that 100 percent. ubisoft i think is in that place I, obviously they're not coming on being like we need to exploit star wars or we need to exploit assassin's creed because that's a crazy thing to say but I do think that that's going to be the, become the business model. I think it is going to be, all right, yeah, like you said, we're going to make Star Wars, we're going to make Assassin's Creed, we're going to make Far Cry's, and we're only making surefire bets. We're going to make Just Dances. Like, the things that we know people are going to buy and the things that we see consistent sales numbers in, those things that we're going to focus on, and we're going to hope, hope and pray to God that Star Wars is a fucking hit. Because if it's not a fucking, like, breakout success... And like uh, Hogwarts Legacy might be too, putting it too much, but almost in a similar kind of way where it is selling way more than anything else we put out before. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of layoffs and you're going to see a lot of restructuring in terms of what Ubisoft becomes. And so moving on to story number three, uh, fans think Need for Speed developer Stellar could be teasing a new burnout. This is Jordan Midler at Video Games Chronicle. A tweet from Need for Speed developer Stellar Entertainment has caused some fans to believe it could be teasing a new burnout game. Stellar Entertainment has previously worked on Need for Speed Unbound, Need for Speed Remastered, and Burnout Paradise Remastered, and now fans think it could be teasing another game in the Burnout series. Quote, our way of giving you kind of weird insider intel uh, what we're wor- about what we're working on uh, without actually telling you what we're working on, the post reads on Twitter. Quote, and the bosses still haven't issued any takedowns. <laughs> Happy days. Uh, it, c- it continues attached to the post. Uh, attached to the post is an image reading POV. You're about to be rear ended. End quote. 
The reference to the rear. But also with an image of a cat with, uh, with like a an astronaut helmet. Yeah, 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 yeah. The references what? to rear ending and takedowns have caused speculation, with takedowns being the in game name for destroying an opponent's car in the racing series. Takedown was also the subtitle of the third uh, game in the series. In response to this, fans were quick to point out that the post could tease the longer way to return to the racing franchise. Uh, I did do some of my own independent research on this. Good, I'm glad. And I started scrolling down the timeline. Barry, if you're able to bring back up um, the Twitter uh, timeline for that account, for Stellar Entertainment, they have similar images that they've tweeted out in a similar way where they are like, oh, we're teasing something. Let's talk, let's tease a little bit about our next project but not tell you what it is so our bosses don't get mad. Um, and all of them have the cat with the, with, the, <laughs> with the helmet on. Yeah, their whole thing, I'm on their website, right? And it's very spacey. So I guess the cat with the helmet yeah. is kind of like their deal. I think that's just straight up like their like logo or like their um, like mascot type situation. Um, but yeah, the rear-ended thing, the takedown thing makes me think for sure it's going to be a burnout style thing. I wonder if it's a new burnout or a burnout three takedown remaster. Because in one of the other tweets, they have like a, oh man, like we're working on really nice textures or something like that. And there's, they also tease something coming for 2024. And that, for me, screams, oh, we're remaking. 2022, we're they said, Stellar Without Context, our way of giving you sneaky hints at what we're working on, whilst being vague enough not to get in trouble with the bosses. Uh, I don't know, sly emoji. And then it just says, tunnel, period. That is all. Yeah. Let's see, that was 2022? Thing. January 2020. Oh. January, January 22, I see. 2024. I see, I see. Uh, and yeah, that, I'm like, I don't know what tunnels can mean. Maybe, like, Burnout 3, I know, did have, like, the um, special takedowns you could do, where I'm sure there's one in a tunnel that, like, gave you, like, a special, like, picture. That's usually how they did in Burnout 3. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm leaning towards Burnout 3 remaster here. Okay. Moving on. Story number four. Sec of America is reportedly laying off more than 10% God, of staff. This is Triscoll <laughs> and at Video Games Chronicle. Sega of America is reportedly set to lay off 61 employees, amounting to more than 10% of its total staff. As spotted by Reset Era user, the layoffs were listed on What Layoff, an, automat an automated Twitter account which lists verified layoffs as they are announced. The account noted that according to a California war notice, uh, Sega of America will lay off 61 employees on March 8th, 2024. California's WARN Act, which stands for Worker Adjustment and re uh, re Retraining Notification, legally requires companies to give 60 days notice before a mass layoff. VGC has confirmed via the state of California's employment, the development department, that Sega of America has given notice of plans to, uh, for two separate layoffs of 49 staff and 12 staff, both of which will be made effective on March 8th. According to numerous employer information resources, Sega of America has roughly 440 staff, uh, meaning a layoff of this nature uh, would theoretically affect around 13% of its workforce. Sega has yet to officially announce the layoffs. VGC has contacted the company for a statement. This sucks in the way that, of course, all these layoff stories suck, but also in the way of if I'm working at Sega of America and I see this and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, our company hasn't even said anything about it yet. And I'm yeah. learning from articles or people retweeting just like a fucking Twitter account. Yeah. That is upsetting. Yeah, the Warren Act is a good idea, but then also it's terrifying if yeah. you're there and you have like, your coffee looking at a game news like, oh, they just notified California they're going to lay off all these people. Yeah, like 10% <laughs> of us are gone. That's fucking scary. Uh, there, uh, there was a tweet that Barry dropped in here um, from somebody saying Sega wasn't planning on laying off any of its employees, not until they unionized the last year oh, uh, so instead of paying their 61 workers more than minimum wage they're going to fire them instead uh when will you recognize uh at takes aegis uh and start respecting your employees i assume that's the the, the union yeah but yeah very unfortunate news <sighs> exactly well, your keeps taken gotta love your subtle union busting Story number, Subtle? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. uh, story number five, uh, we got PDP's new wireless guitar controller. Uh, this is from Taylor Lyles at iGen. I'm not going to get into the full article, but basically this is something we've known is going to happen for a while, right? PDP teased that they're working on a new physical guitar and like physical instruments for Fortnite Festival. I actually missed that. That's great. Oh, yeah. And it's actually happening. And so it works with Rock Band and eventually it's going to work uh, with Fortnite Festival. There's a trailer that you could bring up for, for Greg Barrett. Just give Greg a peek on what these what these things look like. PDP. Yeah, the time PDP. has come to <coughs> rock on. And uh, they've also not shared a price yet, but they say the controller will be released Rift sometime Master Wireless this feature. spring. And it looks kind of sleek. I don't know. I'm kind of digging this thing. Hell yeah. I mean, what's not to love? Yeah. We all miss our plastic instruments, right? Exactly. <coughs> Greg, that was a lot of big news. Yeah. We just talked about. But if I wanted something smaller, say the tiniest news I needed to know about. Where would I look? You'd go to our last news story, the We News channel. 
where we cover all the small news items you need to know about. Story number six. It's time for Wii News. I like to time it out with the drop. Uh, this comes from Steven Totillo. Spec Ops The Line is to be delisted entirely from online gaming stores. We talked a, lo a little bit about this uh, yesterday as it seemed to, uh, to start, but uh, 2K Rep has told Steven Totillo, Spec Ops The Line will no longer be available on online storefronts as several partnership licenses related to the game are expiring. I'm confirming what some were speculating yesterday. I like your dance. Thank you. Yeah. Feeling good about it. Uh, great, great game. Spec Ops The Line. If you haven't played it, pick it up. I mean, you can't anymore. I thought I was about to. No, I think it's done. I oh, think. and Will, I thought it was they were warning us that it was coming up. No, it was happening. Well, it's, yeah, Spec Ops line is to be delisted entirely, meaning that it's not, it's coming. Yeah, I, 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 I saw, I think Wario was still posting that it was still on GOG. Possibly. Oh, is it? Okay. I'll say, I saw a lot of people all last night just being like, oh, it's gone here. It's gone here. It's not on Xbox anymore. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess you're shit out of luck. Can I still, if I can still get it on GOG, let me, I'll Chat hop on is that. saying, no, it's already gone. So is there you. anywhere I can still get it? Because I'll like to get Spec Ops because I don't have that game anywhere. Let me know. Uh, In Exile has announced that Shapeshifter Games, the new studio formed by X Volition devs, are working with them on Clockwork Revolution. Oh. Another follow up from yesterday. Gran Turismo Sport received a final patch, uh, which allows offline saving. That's cool. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, preservation. Of hey, man, I'm with you. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink reviews are up. It has an 80 on Open Critic and an 83 on Metacritic, and I'm very salty about that. So I, I spent a dollar on it in the fantasy critic okay for my fan okay. and I, I needed to do more than that yeah yeah i know 80 is like not bad at all 80 is actually pretty great yeah but 10 points that's great yeah but like well you need bangers i need there. bangers you ain't getting I, the 20s i'm getting in my head i was like oh well you got the fighting game and if the fighting game's like what an 87 or whatever yeah, yeah, it was I killed it with that. certainly the mainline game is going to be a fucking banger it, it wasn't it, it wasn't more it. than 87 you fell for it my faint the announcement show for evo 2024 will take place next tuesday february 6th at 5 p.m pacific time very excited about that. We're going to see what games uh, they're going to play over there at that Evo. Hopefully we see some Tekken 8. And then the PlayStation Plus monthly games for February are Foam Stars, Roller Drone, and Steel Rising. Get hyped for that. Uh, we do have one more from Wario64 that popped during the show. Uh, Power World total players across Steam and Xbox are now at 19 million. Woo! On Steam, they have 12 million. And on Xbox, they have 7 million. Wow. Sucks those records are about to be broken by Suicide Squad. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Helldivers. You know? Helldivers. Helldivers is going to come through, demolish anything. Uh, that's it for Wii News. Let me check the Super Chats, see what's going on here. Oh, we got, we got some Super Chats. Uh, Dear Sixlet says, uh, I'm lacking the game enough, but I'd probably be even more stoked if it was Teen Titans, even with the same game structure. If this is Teen Titans, this would have been my game of the year. <laughs> I fucking love Teen Titans. It's it, shocking to think that people might want to be heroes and not just be the bad guys, you know? Like, let me run around, run around as Beast Boy. Yeah. And different animals. Robin. Or Cyborg. Starfire. Raven. Yeah. Like, what a... Raven, come on. Now, are you, when you think of it, are you thinking of just any Teen Titans? Do you want Teen Titans Go? Or are you just... Uh, you not know? Go, but like the Cartoon, the Cartoon Network Teen Titans. Sure, okay, okay. But also, it doesn't have to be that. Like, yeah. it could be like their own take on Teen Titans. I wouldn't mind that. But Wait, I just like that like team. Raven? You said Greg? I, no, I went, ooh, Raven. I was like, oh, I, I think love I was Raven. like, a, oh, yeah, like I love Raven kind of. Ooh, like, yeah, I love Raven. Yeah, yeah, Raven's great. And say try guys you know Netrion, so if you love raven <laughs> let me tell you about it let me tell you right now if you like suicide squad i wish i could be a hero let me tell you about a free game called dc universe online all right you can play it right now you can get all sorts of raven in there is it coming to uh ps5 it's a great question they did finally put out a statement over the holiday that was like yo we're working on it so it's okay let's go street shadow says street shadow assassin's creed red or ghost of shima 2 in all honesty mm. ghost was uh, a better version of assassin's creed that i haven't had since black flag I mean, let's just be straight up. You ain't getting Ghost anytime soon, so don't worry about that. If you had to pick one, though, Ghost here or, or Assassin's Creed Red. One of these games is getting canceled. I mean, I would go... Wow. Yeah, they're canceling wow. the other one, yeah. I would go Ghost then. I'd, I'd like to see them... I love Sucker Punch, obviously. I'd like to see them expand on all the ideas they had, right? And see what they come up with. Yeah. I'm excited for um, Assassin's Creed Red, but yeah. I think for me, Ghost is more of a surefire bet of what I like. Okay. I would not because like I'm, I'm more of the Assassin's Creed fan, but I'm just I'm we've seen Ghost and like what what that is already. Like I'm just fascinated to see what they're gonna do here, what they can do uh, in feudal Japan, and if they can actually pull that off. So it's more of an interest thing than more so than what I personally want. Fair enough. I will say Assassin's Creed Red probably gonna be like 500 hours long. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna get more bang for my everlasting button. gobstopper that you'll never get out of games. So. Now it's time for You're Wrong, where you write in and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Dear Sixlet writes in and says, Roosevelt's 
Roosevelt's about section on their website states that Teddy Roosevelt is their namesake, Got confirming it. that it's Roosevelt, fuck, Roosevelt, and not <laughs> results. Both Rose and and ruse are considered correct ah, pronunciations okay, great. and very uh, regionally. We did it, everybody. But worth noting that both presidents pronounced their names Roosevelt. Okay. They were wrong. And then uh, New, uh, New Watch's Eyes says, Spec Ops The Line has been taken off all digital storefronts, Steam GOG, uh, Xbox. Your, hope, your only hope is to get it physically, but the eBay physical price has risen significantly. It's going to be one of them games that's really expensive in a few years, you know? Before everything was digital, you know. If you have a physical copy of Spec Ops: The Line, Hit your boy pr- up. protect it, because ten years from now you're gonna be able to sell that thing, for like uh, five hundred bucks. I bet. If five hundred, maybe a thousand. I don't send know. your kid to college. On I don't it. know how this stuff works, but you're gonna be able to sell that for a lot of money. That's it for you're wrong. Hey, of course this has been kind of funny games daily each and every weekday we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on youtube twitch and podcast services around the globe if you love what we do please support us with the kind of funny membership on patreon or youtube to get all of our shows ad free watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive show until next time game daily